Hey everyone, Pastor Stan again, bringing you a message from the Word of God, the Bible. Today we're going to look at how to actually receive answers to prayer. How to actually receive them. Many times we prayed and prayed and prayed and, and wondered, how come I'm not receiving the answer to my prayer? Well, there's some, some reasons for that. Jesus lays it out very clearly for us if we will in fact do it. And that's what we're going to look at today. How to actually have your answers to prayer. How to receive them how to actually receive answers to prayer. So let's take a look at it. Our scripture for today is going to be the gospel of Mark chapter 11, verses 12 and 13 and verses 20 through 25. Here we go. The next morning, as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. He noticed a fig tree in full leaf a little way off. So he went over to see if he could find any figs but there were only leaves because it was too early in the season for fruit. Then Jesus said to the tree, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And the disciples heard him say it. The next morning, as they passed by the fig tree he had cursed, the disciples noticed it had withered from the roots up. Peter remembered what Jesus had said to the tree on the previous day and exclaimed, Look, Rabbi, the fig tree you cursed has withered and died. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Have faith in God. I tell you the truth, you can say to this mountain, May you be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and it will happen. But you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. I tell you, you can pray for anything, and if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. But when you are praying, first forgive anyone you are holding a grudge against, so that your Father in heaven will forgive your sins too. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. Now, I, I have heard many people over the years, many people have said, Pastor Stan, I have prayed and prayed and prayed, and nothing happened. Does God actually answer prayer, or am I doing something wrong? Well, that's the experience of a lot of folks, quite frankly. Uh, many, uh, maybe most, if we really knew the truth of it. So here's, here's my experience. Organized religion, that is denominations, local church building churches, others like that, they have taught people to not have faith. I know that sounds crazy, right? Well, they're supposed to be teaching us how to have faith, but no, it's, it's not true. They actually teach people, it's been my experience, how to not have faith. Organized religion de teaches dependence on the corporate denomination or the local building church instead of God. This is the reason the Word of God is watered down to practically nothing and is replaced the Word of God is replaced with the statement of faith, the bylaws, the Constitution, book of church law, and human tradition. God, and specifically the power of God to answer prayers, is completely nullified until there is no longer a born-again experience, no more miracles, no more gifts of the Spirit, no fresh prophetic word from God, and no answers to prayer. Now, that's a rough thing to accept, but it's true. It's been my experience anyway. For those who are then tired of being talked down to and taught that organized religion is actually God, in order to overcome that, a great relearning has to take place. A great relearning, that's right. Uh, part of that relearning is not being afraid to go it alone with God. We, get, we become so dependent on attending church, that that becomes the place where I go and sometimes hide, or that's my social circle, or that's my little group, or this is our church, my church. So it, it's, a, it's a great challenge to set that aside and go it alone with God. That's right. Just think about it for a moment. If you're part of an organized religion church and now you just decided you're going to go it on your own. Now, if you think that this is not true, you should try it. 
you will be immediately persecuted by some in your church, former church perhaps, who will uh, lay upon you, gossip, and oh, there must be something wrong. Uh, he's not coming here anymore. And they'll talk bad about you. It's um, sad, but true, which just exposes the, the evil of that kind of system. Yes, organized religion teaches, actually teaches fear in order to control people, to keep them in church, keep them attending, and then to take their money. That's true. That's true. Part of that relearning is not being afraid to go it alone with God because organized religion teaches fear, fear in order to control people, to keep them in church and take their money. While, of course, this is a great evil. However, to be set free from this bondage means disassociating myself from organized religion and their continual onslaught of manipulations. Oh my goodness. Program after program after program, which all cost what? Money. So besides your regular tithes and offerings, make sure you put some extra in there for the newest program, which is probably thought to be going to save the church, but does not. Church continues to decline because it's a complete rebellion against God. Then once, I set, once I'm set free from this bondage, I am free to learn to have faith in God alone and not the world or its ways, which is what one will see in organized religion church. So here's the thing. I must decide. I must decide to have faith in God alone. I must decide to have faith in God alone. No matter how many times my faith may fail, I still must decide. I must make that decision to have faith God in God alone. Otherwise, I'm going to find myself in the place that I don't want to be, and that's not having my prayers answered. It's like hitting myself, uh, running into the wall, and uh, wondering how come I'm so hurt because I'm within a system that does not teach me that God actually answers prayers, that there are no miracles. All right, so let's let's look at it. James chapter 1 and 5 and following. This is This is where I can find myself, and I have found myself, many times over the years when I always had like a backup plan. Well, I'm praying to God and for an answer to prayer, but my plan B is, well, the Lord wants us to view him as plan A and only A. There is no plan B. Here's what James writes, chapter one, verse five and following. James says, if you need wisdom, and who doesn't, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking, but when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver, for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed about by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world. They are unstable in everything they do. Well, I've been that person before, and that's not a good place to be. That's not a good place to be. Am I trusting in the church, the organization of the church? Am I trusting in God? What am I trusting in? Am I trusting in the world, the government? You know, what am I trusting in? How about just God? Just God. God alone. That's what he says, James says in verse 6, but when you ask him for something, when you're praying, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Now, in our scripture lesson for today, Jesus curses a fig tree, and it completely withers in one day. Now, <laughs> that, that is a rather interesting story, I have to say. But then after Jesus curses the fig tree, he teaches his disciples and he teaches us how to receive answers to prayer. Now, th amazingly, most people can't move past Jesus cursing a fig tree. I can't believe Jesus would do a curse of fig tree. You know, I just don't, all this stuff. Well, first of all, God can do whatever God wants to. God can do whatever what God wants to. And this, Jesus uses this tree as an illustration to teach his disciples how to receive answers to prayer. It's true. 
Some people, however, can't seem to move past Jesus cursing the fig tree. <laughs> but I don't focus on that. I focus on Jesus teaching on how to receive answers to prayer. Yay! The disciples can see the fig tree right there in front of them, and they're looking at the tree as he teaches them. Jesus divides his teaching on receiving answers to prayer into three parts. So as they're looking at the fig tree that withered in one day after Jesus cursed it, then he teaches them on how to answer, uh, how to receive answers to prayer in three parts. The first part, Jesus says, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God alone. Not in a denomination or local church or a preacher or anything else, but in God alone. In God alone. That's what James says, and, and that's true, and that's what Jesus says. Have faith in God. Have faith in God alone. Now, this can be a great challenge, obviously. This can be a great challenge, but completely attainable if I decide that's what I want to do and then ask God's help in doing it. You know, the greatest commandment is love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love God. Love God with everything you have. So if my prayer is, God, help me do that, then he will clearly help me do that. Yes, but that doesn't mean it won't be a great challenge if I'm like addicted to the local church. Secondly, Jesus says in verse 23, I tell you the truth, Jesus says. I tell you the truth. This is the truth. You can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and it will happen. But you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. It will be yours. It's funny how we people are. Oh, yeah, I'm I got a cold. I'm praying for God to heal my cold. I believe that I'm going to recover from the cold anyway, but I'm praying for God to help me to recover from it. But if I get cancer, my, oh no, I got cancer, I'm gonna die. It's funny how we are. So the Lord is teaching us how to not be like that. Yes, Jesus starts by telling us, and uh, the word of God cannot be broken by the way, that the impossible is possible with God. Now that is the very good news. Jesus says that the impossible is possible with God. Even if people make fun of us and, oh, you probably believe like those, you know, crazy people in the Bible. Yeah, that's just fine. I'd rather go it alone with God than to listen to the world. I mean, why would I listen to the devil? After all, who are we talking about here? Well, Jesus is talking about the Almighty God who created everything that exists and has all power, knows everything, and knows me and knows you and loves us. There's no one above him. He is the top. As he says, Ezekiel 12, 25, here's what the Lord says. For I am the Lord. If I say it, it will happen. And Jesus is giving us the words of the Lord. And if he says it, it will happen if we will simply apply it to our lives. Now, Jesus, God's son, has said the impossible is possible with God. So I believe it. Trust it. I have a hard time following through on it, but that's why I practice prayer. Practice prayer. Practice walking with the Lord so that I can grow closer to Him. So for me, I pray and then proceed forward as if God has answered my prayer. So here's an example of what that looks like. I have a friend from Sierra Leone. And when his village received Jesus as Savior, they became true believers. They noticed that Jesus taught that God fed the birds even though they didn't plant crops for harvest. So when food ran short in the village, they would make the trek to other villages to share the good news about Jesus in obedience with his words. And some of these villages were 20 miles away, one way. On the way back, they would look along the roads for the food the Lord had set out for them. And they would always find plenty of food, enough for the journey home 
and plenty to share and store when they arrived there. They believed the words of Jesus. I tell you that I tell you, you can pray for anything. And it and if you believe you've received it, you it will be yours. They believed this. And they believed that God was going to protect them and provide for them, and he did, because they went out and looked for it. They obeyed and he provided. They had faith in God alone and believed God would set out food for them as they obeyed him. And sure enough, God set food out for them. Now, the third part of Jesus' teaching on receiving answers to prayer concerns forgiveness. Now, here's uh, the one I think where pretty much everybody falls short and we need God's help to overcome this. Let's take a look at it. Verse 25, Jesus says, But when you are praying, First, forgive anyone you are holding a grudge against so that your Father in heaven will forgive your sins too. Me, read it again. <laughs> but when you are praying, first forgive anyone you are holding a grudge against so that your Father in heaven will forgive your sins too. Now, the Lord is a real stickler on this one. That's because Jesus died for our sins, his son. Let's take a look at it, Matthew 16, 14. If you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. Disobeying the Lord's commandments, like forgiving people, it really keeps me from enjoying the closeness of a relationship with God that would make it possible to receive answers to prayer. That's right. Let's look at it again. Disobeying the Lord's commandments, like forgiving people, keeps me from enjoying a closeness of a relationship with God that would make it possible to receive answers to prayer. I'm too distant. I'm too far away. I'm in complete rebellion against him when I refuse to obey and forgive. Now, when I accepted Jesus as Savior, all my sins were forgiven from the beginning to the end of my life. So I will still go to heaven when I die. But the quality of my life will greatly suffer if I refuse to give others, especially after Jesus died, so that I could be forgiven. And now you might wonder, well, I don't think I'm holding the grudge. I know, right? It seems like that. But here's the thing. If I don't know if I'm holding the grudge or not, I might think I'm not. If I ask God, if I ask the Holy Spirit to show me someone, guess what? Names start coming to my mind. Right? I start thinking about certain people. Yes, and then with the Lord's help, develop a plan on how to forgive. That's right, how to forgive. And as soon as I start forgiving folks that I'm holding the grudge against, that I didn't even know I was holding the grudge, uh, grudge against, then my life immediately improves. And then the Lord can work with me to answer my prayers. So this is Jesus teaching, my friends, on how to receive answers to prayer. Well, what do we learn today, preacher? Well, here's some things that I've learned. Number one, I must trust in God alone to have my answers to prayer. I must trust in God alone to have my prayers answered. I must. I must trust in God alone, not anything else. Number two, the impossible is possible for us. Why? Because Jesus says so. Jesus says this is what will happen. And if he says it and the word of God cannot be broken, then it will happen. The impossible is possible for us because Jesus says so. And number three, I must forgive others. I must, I must, I must forgive others. No grudge holding. Gossip is always a sign of holding a grudge. No, no grudges. I must forgive others to be made right with God so that he can answer my prayers. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thank you for sending Jesus from heaven to die on the cross for my sins. Help me learn how to receive answers to prayer and to share this teaching with others. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. My friends, it's been good to be with you on the Pastor Stan YouTube channel. As always, like and subscribe. Let's get the word out. If you know someone who's struggling with this, which is pretty much everyone, but it could be a benefit too to send them to the 
the link to this video and let's get the word out and help some folks who are in need. All right, my friends, we'll see you next time on the Pastor Stan YouTube channel. God love you. So do I. Bye-bye.